You don't know, and you were in a hurry. There's a hundred ways to bring God glory. There's a million ways. But I'm telling you, we exist to bring Him glory. I want every day, and I, I'm not there yet, y'all, I'm not there yet, but I pray that I will keep my focus every day. I want to say, God, I want to be your friend today, and I want to advance your kingdom. What am I saying? I'm saying, I want to bring you glory. It might be just, a, uh, in my eyes, just a little thing, just a little reflection. I see myself kind of like a little mirror. What's those little mirrors that ladies have? A compact? Guys, I hope none of y'all have compacts. But from what I understand, it's one of those little things where they can look in and, and, and see themselves. But I think about kind of like the sun, the bright, big, burning sun. I mean, it's millions of times bigger than our earth, so I can't understand that. But when that light shines in, if I had a little mirror up here today, and I just kind of, and I just kind of shot it right here at Scott Allen's face, you know, try to hit him in the glasses with that ray. Sometimes I feel like my life is just a little, a little bitty thing, just a little mirror, just trying to catch God's glory and just, but the thing is, I don't want to just catch it. I want to reflect it. I want to reflect it. I believe that we're all called to be mirrors. I keep thinking about the moon. The moon is nothing but a big dumb rock. That's all it is. There's no light in the moon. But I love a beautiful full moon. Don't you? It's beautiful. But it's doing nothing but just going, <coughs> reflect. Reflect. All I do is go around the earth and reflect. All we have to do, guys, is just go around the earth and reflect. Reflect his love. Reflect his patience. Reflect his power. And reflect his truth. The world's waiting to see it. Do not lose heart. Verse 14, and we're almost done. For this reason. Oh, finally, we're back. For this reason. Paul's off the rabbit trail. He's not reviewing chapters 1 and 2 anymore. He's back to his original thought first one. He's like, oh yeah. And what I was saying. For this reason. I bow my knees before the Father. From whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Paul's about to pray for them. You know, anytime Paul prays, I want to get in on that. I want to tap into that prayer. So what we're going to do, I'm going to read it. We're going to talk about it probably, and then I want to pray that over us, because we need that. But he says that he would grant you, verse 16, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened. I want that with power through his spirit in the inner man so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith in you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up with all the fullness of God whoa it's like 20 sermons but a few things I gather out of that is that it's not going to be easy to continue to bring God glory or else he wouldn't have said a prayer. When he realized how magnificent this whole thing was, he said, whoa, let me pray for y'all because y'all got a task ahead. And he dropped down to his knees and he said, God, I pray that you would grant these people according to your riches and glory. Lord, strengthen them. So we're going to need strength to do this thing. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I looked up that word dwell, and it means more than like hang out. It actually means to become comfortable. It's like saying, it reminds me of that song we used to sing, come and make my heart your home. It's saying, let me get to the point, Lord, I know you're in my heart. I know you're in my life. But Lord, let my heart begin to be a place that you just enjoy dwelling in. You know, like if you come to my house, like, in a hurry, like we didn't know you were coming, we might not let you in every room. Okay? You know what I'm talking about? Because we have five kids, 
and then there's me, the other kid. So Laura has six children, and I'm the messiest one. And so every now and then, there's a mess at our house. And she's a great housekeeper, and I don't know how she does it, but there might be a situation where you come to our house and we don't let you dwell at all the rooms. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Some of them might be off limits. It might be where everything landed right before you got there. Can I get an amen? Amen. Jesus doesn't want any closed doors in my life. He wants to get into the heart of every situation. He wants to be in my entertainment. He wants to be in my exercise. He wants to be in my relationships. He wants to be in my future. He wants to be in my finances. He wants to be in my decisions. He wants to get all up in there. And when he walks in, he doesn't want to feel uncomfortable. When Laura and I first started dating, um, if she had come over and we were maybe going to go out for a movie or something, and maybe if there was, I had an apartment at the time, and if she had come over and knocked on the door, and I would have peeked open the door and be like, I didn't know you were going to get here this early. Uh, if you can just wait right here, I'll be out in just a minute. That'd be weird, wouldn't it? All the women are going, oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> and then if you heard the back door, you saw, you heard, saw some blonde-headed girl going out the back door. <laughs> Who would be here today? <laughs> Amen, she said. If she came in and there was another girl on the couch, and I would have said, come on in, just make yourself home. But that's what we do with Jesus often. There's a mistress in the house, and we say, oh, Jesus, come on in. Make yourself at home. Oh, don't go in that room. <coughs> Just stay right out here, Jesus. <laughs> oh, and I need some stuff. <laughs> Jesus don't want to do it like that. It's saying we can come to a place well, we've received two things. I see two main things here. One is a strength. We're going to need strength to persevere and bring in glory. But he also, he said, I pray that you will get such a revelation of God's love. Because once I began to experience this woman's love, I didn't want the love of another. I began to just take care of all the details because I was focused on that. That love was overwhelming me. And it began to change my behavior. It began to change my priorities. It began to change my decisions. It changed the way I thought about everything. God, and Paul is saying, for you to really bring in glory, to do this thing called the church, to accomplish this mission, you're going to need strength, and you're going to need a revelation of the height, the depth, the width of God's love. When I begin to fade spiritually, one of the best things I can do is say, God, remind me of the cross. Show me your love. How high, how deep. Show me where I was, Ephesians 2. Show me where I am now, Ephesians 1. God, give me a revelation of your love because I have forgotten. And I do forget. But when I begin to see his love, then that's why, that's why I think it was John who wrote, Oh my goodness, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should call him Abba, Daddy. He was like, he had a revelation of that moment. A lot of times we go, eh. If you're ever in a eh, which we all get there, it means you've lost your revelation. But if you're going to accomplish this mission, if you're going to bring in daily glory and not Sunday glory, yeah. then we're going to have to say, God, show me your love. Show me your love. Help me see it. Help me see it in the clouds. Help me see it in the moon. Help me see it in my song. Help me see it in my kids. Help me see it at work. Show me your glory. See, Moses couldn't reflect God's glory until he had seen God's glory. You have to be close to get the glory on you and then walk out and show it to the world. It's only then when they begin to say, whoa, 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 Moses, your face, man. And he was like, oh, my bad, I forgot I've been in the glory. Give me a mask or something, put something over this. I don't want to hurt anybody. We're going to have to get in God's presence and remember his love. Lord, let it be fresh to us. Then Paul closes it out, verse 20. Now, to him who is able to do far more, abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, 
according to the power that works within us, that's power in us, to Him be the glory. In the church, everybody say in the church. In the church. And in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Did you see that? He said, let me sum it up, God. You're amazing. You're amazing. You can do more than we ask. My prayer, I'm not worried about what. Can you answer that? You're way more than able to do that in any prayer. And God, may the church and Christ bring you glory for all generations. Don't you worry about Christ bringing him glory. That's good. What I want to know is, is the church going to bring him glory for generation to generation? And will we be a part of it? Amen? Stand to your feet, if you will, and I'll pray this over us to dismiss us. Next week, we'll cover Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to turn this thing outward and see how to live it out. Hmm. Verse 14, I'll read this prayer over House of Grace. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. From whom every family in heaven and on earth derives this name. That he would grant you, everyone in this room, and everybody watching this video, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner man. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts, he may be at home in your hearts through faith. And that you being rooted and grounded in love so that nothing can knock you down or make you stop may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you.